Welcome to Covington Latin School's 2020 Virtual Graduation Ceremony. Due to the restrictions caused by the current global pandemic, the entire Covington Latin School community is saddened that we cannot gather personally to celebrate the many accomplishments of our class of 2020. The leadership and resilience our seniors have shown during this crisis has been an inspiration to our entire school community. True to our motto, they have exhibited goodness, discipline, and knowledge. We're glad that you've joined us and welcome to our 2020 virtual commencement exercises. Good evening and welcome to the 93rd commencement for Covington Latin School. I would like to take this time to specifically honor Bishop Foy's for his presence, Mr. Kleins, Father Mayor, Father Stenger, any honored guests that may be associated with this pr presentation, as well as our parents, and most importantly, the graduating class of 2020. Congratulations, and once again, welcome. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Heavenly Father, we give you thanks and praise for the many blessings and gifts you bestow upon us. Look kindly upon the graduates of Covington Latin School. Send your spirit upon them. Fill them with your wisdom and blessings. Give them direction, purpose, and perseverance as they enter the next phase of their lives so that they may always use their gifts and talents to serve you in all things. Give them courage and strength as they prepare for what lies in front of them. Give them wisdom and perseverance to discern your holy will. Protect them and keep them safe. Bless their parents for the sacrifices they have made to provide them with a Catholic education. Grant each of us the graces we need to follow in the footsteps of your Son, Jesus Christ, who is Lord forever and ever. Amen. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Bishop Foyes, Mr. Kleins, Father Mayor, Father Stenger, faculty, honored guests, parents, and the graduating class of 2020. I have had the opportunity to speak at several commencements over the course of the years. But I can assure you, this is my very first virtual address. Usually this time is flush with emotions, tears of joy and happiness. While that still may be the case, I do understand that anger, frustration, and sadness may also be part of this ceremony. And I likewise understand why these different emotions are also part of today's celebration. Today, you'll hear quotes from Virgil, Aeneas, but not from me, however. My part of the reflection is much deeper and will come from Lucy and Charlie Brown. In particular, the football gag that had appeared in Charles Schultz's comic strip, Peanuts. Lucy tells Charlie Brown that she'll hold the football while he comes up and kicks it. Charlie Brown refuses, not trusting her. Lucy then says something to persuade him, and he begins to trust her. Charlie Brown steps back, runs up to the ball, but at the very last second, Lucy pulls it away. Charlie Brown flies into the air, falling down and hurting himself. Well, in many ways, I feel like Lucy. Early on, I responded to questions about graduation by saying I have no plans to cancel commencement, seeking your trust. And like Charlie Brown, many of you did. We didn't cancel the ceremony, but it certainly is not what we had expected. So like Lucy, holding the football 
at the last moment, I pulled the ball back, and your emotions went flying, and you were hurt. Unlike Lucy, however, I want to apologize. Some would correctly ask why it's not your fault, and I would agree with that sentiment. But many of you are hurting and are sorrowful on a day that should be joyous and glorious. You need to hear the words, I am sorry for this situation. I searched for words to describe this commencement, and I found a great quote from a wonderful wordsmith, President Abraham Lincoln. In 1861, during what is probably our nation's darkest days, when people needed a reason for hope, he stepped onto the platform, looked at his audience, and said, well, this sucks. Yes, Mr. President, it does. At most normal commencement ceremonies, there are two forms of celebration. One celebrates the graduate for their successes and for their accomplishments. And the other applauds family, teachers, and classmates who sustained the graduates. Even though this ceremony is virtual, it should not and does not diminish your accomplishments or cause us not to acknowledge those supporting members of our community. But the one pressing question hardly ever asked at a graduation, why are you here? Why did you select Covington Latin School when you could have chosen any Catholic high school in the Diocese of Covington? To find that answer, go no further than our Prep 7 students. When I spoke with them this August, I asked them why they selected Covington Latin School. And I'm sure their answers would echo yours. They said they were not being challenged academically at their former schools. They were bored, or they were different, and were being bullied because of it. Yes, you are here because it is a safe place, where you can be yourself and not fear being the butt of someone's joke. You are here because you are gifted in so many ways and Covington Latin celebrates your giftedness and your uniqueness. I have been told that most Covington Latin students think they're the smartest person in the room. Now, I can attest to that since all of us have classes remotely. Finally, I have been told that all commencement addresses should contain a few words of advice. Allow me to close with the following. Go for it. Never avoid doing something because you're afraid to fail. We all had many falls before we learned how to walk. In baseball, a batter fails seven times out of 10, but yet he is considered a great success. Go for it. Reject pettiness and bitterness. They are a waste of time and energy. Generosity will always make you feel better. Find your competitive edge. You are a unique child of God with a slightly different gift. Embrace it and play it to your strengths. Thank you, and congratulations. It is my pleasure to introduce this year's co-valedictorian, Paige Graff. Paige? Welcome to His Excellency Bishop Foy's Father Mayor, Father Stanger, Mr. Kleins, Mr. Gressock, faculty, honored guests, parents, and classmates. First off, congratulations to all of you. Seniors, you made it. Your hard work has paid off, and you're here at the finish line. 
Teachers and parents, thank you for helping us along the way. We certainly would not be here if it were not for you all and your support. Of course, this is not the graduation any of us were expecting, but it's a graduation nonetheless, and that is cause for celebration. Let us celebrate each other today and let us reflect on our time here at CLS. What do you remember? Where did we start? Looking back at our beginnings in freshman year, for some of us prep year, I can imagine we were all a little nervous to begin. Everything was very sensitive at that time because we were trying to find our identities, which were fragile. For most of us, we can probably remember the first grade we got that we were really proud of. For most of us, we can also remember the not so good grade we got that upset us. But if I asked you now to recall the worst grade you got freshman year on that test you did really poorly on, could you tell me the exact number? What about the best grade you got on a math test? What percentage was that? If you're like me, the answer is no. You cannot remember these things. In fact, they seem a little irrelevant now. Not like the first sting of pride or embarrassment we felt when we got them way back when. But what if instead, I asked you to remember the first friends you made? Or the first person you took to a dance? Or the first teacher who kindly helped you? What about the first person you tutored or who tutored you? Or for me, the first people who taught me how to ski? You remember these things. And why is that? Because these things hold meaning and a number does not. Now I'm not saying that grades are unimportant. We wouldn't name who's at the top of the class if we did not want to recognize academic achievement and I probably wouldn't be standing up here. And this achievement, it is good, and it is good that we do recognize it as such. But 20, 30 years from now, no one's going to remember their class rank, who got the math award, who placed in that track meet, or who made prom court. Not because awards and recognition and achievement don't matter, but because they simply don't last a lifetime. They are part of our circumstances in the moment. Our circumstances change, our successes change, but who we are and how we choose to treat others every day does not. Just as the circumstances we find ourselves in now do not define our identity or our worth or our happiness. These circumstances with a virus are just a snapshot of our lives. 20 years from now, we will not remember the exact coronavirus infection rate, the number of positive tests, or the specific dates we opened up state by state. What we will remember is the people on the front lines, the doctors, the nurses, the friendly neighbors, the people making masks and sending cards, the friends who checked in on us during quarantine, the teachers who made an effort to teach us and adapt their curriculum plans. We will remember our quality time spent with the ones we love. Why do our brains hold on to these things? Because people matter and numbers do not. Our connections make more of an impact than our personal successes or losses ever will. Now I have no doubt in the future that you all will go on to find success in each of your circumstances. You all are some of the most intelligent, ingenious, brightest human beings I know. I've seen this at CLS, and it should not be overlooked. You all will become innovative engineers, fierce lawyers, talented musicians, brilliant healthcare workers, courageous religious leaders, famous researchers, and bold artists. I have no doubt about this, and I can't wait to see what you do on this earth. I am confident you all will be successful, just as you've been in high school. We are all called to strive toward this kind of success and ambition. But if that is all we will do, we will be left feeling empty. Our happiness must not depend on that which we acquire. Furthermore, God calls us to find not just this temporal happiness, not the feeling that comes from earthly success, but to seek more. We are called to find joy. A joy that goes past any circumstances we may face because we have found the peace of Christ in our hearts. We find this peace in knowing that we are loved by him beyond what we can imagine. We are loved by him no matter what we accomplish or how much we get done. He likes us a whole lot and he loves us even more. We can find peace in sharing this kind of radical love with others. As one of my favorite saints, Therese of Lisieux said, true happiness on earth consists in being forgotten and remaining completely ignorant of created things. I understood that all we accomplish, however brilliant, is worth nothing without love. So, on our race down this path of life, remember that love, because we are called not to just keep running toward success, to keep our eye on the prize, but to sometimes take a break and slow down too. You will fall, you will be set back, whether it's a grade, a loss, or a virus. But remember to stop and look at the people running with you in those times. Stop and remember the people who have run with you this far, 
Who championed you and encouraged you and lifted you up in high school? Whom do you have to thank? Whom can you appreciate? Whom can you love just a little bit more? Now we may not be able to control the circumstances we find ourselves in at the moment, and we may not be able to control how much we leave the house or what our graduation looks like, but we can always control how we treat others. We can control how we express gratitude. We can control how we show compassion. We can control how we love. This virus does not take that control away from us. We can still do this. We still have choices, friends. You made choices throughout your high school career, and you will make many, many more in the future. In college, you all will achieve so much, and you will find so much success. I'm so happy to think of this for you. But I have one ask of you in the future, and it is this. Run your race. Focus on the finish line. But look at the people around you along the way. Talk to that person who looks lonely. Check in with your friends. Thank your teachers. Appreciate your parents. And love others despite whatever circumstance you may face. Cross this finish line and cross the next, but take the time to look back too. You're not running solo and you don't have to. One final thing, because I love Latin and plan to be a classics major, I could not end this speech without referencing it. Our sophomore year, we all read the epic The Aeneid in English, and if you didn't read it, I know you read the spark notes, so you have a basic understanding. Roland and I had the privilege to read the Aeneid in Latin with Ms. Cush this year, and there's a certain passage that I think would do us all some good to hear during our current circumstance. Aeneas, after leaving Troy, losing his family and his home, our hero must set sail to the wide blue open seas. He has lost so much control here, but nevertheless, he holds on to a hope of a better future for him and his companions. While at sea, a horrible storm arises. He loses over half his fleet, and many of his men die in the storm. Afterward, he and his friends are sad, discouraged, and grieving. Instead of wallowing, instead of doing nothing, Aeneas addresses his men. He says, O oh friends, such horrible things you have endured. God will give end to these. You approached both the rage of skill of the sea monster and the deeply roaring cliffs, and you overcame the rocks of the cyclopses. Recall your spirits and send away your mournful fear. And perhaps, at some time, we shall be glad to remember even these things. In the same way, I address you all now. You've made it this far. You've overcome the difficulties of high school. We've all faced our own sea monsters and cyclopses. We've all been tested, but you've made it. This challenge, this storm at sea we face now will end too. And when it does, we will be able to set sail once again. And once we do, once we take to the open, wide blue seas with a hope of a new future, we will look back and perhaps we shall be glad to remember even these things. In Latin, for san et haec olim meminisse uabit. Perhaps at some time we shall be glad to remember even these things. Thank you. We are blessed this year to have co-valedictorians. And so with that said, I would like to introduce our co-valedictorian, Roland Long. Roland? Welcome to His Excellency Bishop Foy's. Father Mayor, Father Stanger, Mr. Kleins, Mr. Gressick, faculty, honored guests, parents, and classmates. Four years. Four years. Some of us five years. It's almost unfathomable. Roughly 700 school days, 5,600 classes, 48 exams, a DC trip, four retreats, two winter formals, four homecomings, and who knows how many mixers. It's an amazing accomplishment. Take some time, tally it up. It's quite the class resume. Although these numbers may have been the same for everyone, our trials certainly were not. Through four years, we've had the blessings to watch each other grow in goodness, discipline, and knowledge. In each respect, we've all seen our classmates carve out their own unique path through equal parts interest and dedication. Senior year is the culmination of it all, and the culmination it certainly has been. Senior year, as with every year, we get the opportunity to approach trials new and old with resolve honed by past experiences. However, for classes, dances, conventions, and assemblies, these are our last as Covington Latin students. This may certainly come off as sad at first, but really it should be a triumph. 
The efforts we have put into all our endeavors have reflected in the grace with which we have approached the challenges of senior year. What daunted us as freshmen, be it Latin tests, study skills, or <coughs> public speaking, we've learned to take it in stride. Just as we take pride in our accomplishments, so we should take equal pride in the manner through which we've confronted them. However, and I'm sure a fair number of you have been waiting for me to mention it, our lasts have been less than conventional. For students, parents, and faculty alike, coronavirus has impacted us in ways none of us could have expected. Our time in non-traditional instruction has been a testament to our school's virtues. We students have remained flexible in maintaining productivity while operating through several online platforms. Likewise, the faculty have shown amazing compassion, helping bewildered students through stress and encouraging virtual face-to-face -face contact. The amount of effort the faculty have put into virtual classes alone, I feel, has gone undermentioned. Some teachers who had never used technology in their curriculum were forced to adapt to online platforms, while others had to scrap pre-existing technology setups to better accommodate online learning. I think I speak with the support of my class in thanking all of you for your efforts throughout this difficult period. Yet, coronavirus has added a new last. March 12th, the last day we met in person, the last day we walked through the school's hallways, our last school lunch, our last day in the senior lounge, the list goes on. Alongside eight weeks of classes, we unfortunately had one less prom, and even in this graduation address, I speak from behind a screen. All of these scenarios are not preferable, but they give an important point of reflection. We get so wrapped up in the future and what's coming next, how to plan, that the moment slips away. I've spoken of these last triumphs. It's a feeling all of you have felt in one way or another. But how many times in our careers and lives do we do something for the last time without realizing it? How many of us sat in eighth period eager to leave, unaware of when we'd be back? How many of us ate lunch in the lounge on the 12th and thought nothing of it? At the moment, these things seemed menial or even tedious, everyday, mundane, yet two months later, their absence is felt. They say life comes at you fast, but a lifetime is an unfair time frame for a teenager. Four years is far more convenient. We can look back at what we've taken for granted. Every moment is precious, even if we don't recognize it. But to call a senior year an end ignores so much. College is on the horizon. Once again, we have the opportunity to carve individual paths through our college experience. We will again write essays, hear lectures, and meet the other responsibilities we have conquered, but at last the reins will be let loose. Majors, minors, electives, clubs, service experiences, schedules, and communities will be entirely our decision. Our growth and merit in college rests again on our ability to seize the moment. We will see similar academic and social opportunities to CLS, as well as entirely new ones on an entirely different scale. What we take away from college will depend on the effort we put into it. We've all heard that adage a million times, and I'm sure some of you are rolling your eyes at me right now, and I get it but I hope our experiences in this time of emptiness have really spoken to its credit. Carpe diem, I know we're all ready. It has been a while since we have had a salutatorian speak at the commencement exercises, and it is my esteemed pleasure to welcome this year's salutatorian, Elise Hermes. Elise. Welcome to His Excellency Bishop Foyes, Father Mayer, Father Stenger, Mr. Kleins, Mr. Gressock, faculty, honored guests, parents, and classmates. It is an honor and a dream come true to be standing here as your salutatorian. To begin my speech, I want everyone to imagine the situation I'm about to present to you. It's March of the year 2020. You just found out that you won't be going back to school for the next few weeks due to a worldwide pandemic. Some people are calling it a coronation, and that's pretty much what it is, right? A vacation, some time where you don't have to go to school, but you still have to keep up with your online schoolwork. You think, I've been waiting all of my life to hear that my school actually wants me to stay home. You're scrolling on Instagram and you see some memes about the class of 2020 having to graduate over video chat. 
You think it's funny because you know it would never happen. After a week or so, you find out that you'll be going back to school a little later than originally predicted. No big deal, things are getting a little boring, but you'd rather be bored than overwhelmed with the end of year mayhem from school. Another week goes by and suddenly you can't see any of your friends. Your family members are all on each other's last nerves, prom is hanging on by a thread, and guess what? You really are gonna graduate over video chat. Well, that escalated quickly. Ladies and gentlemen, if you had told any graduating senior at the beginning of this year that this was going to be their reality, they wouldn't have even given you the time of day. Even the words global pandemic sound like they're coming straight from some apocalyptic movie. Everyone right now is thinking, I never thought this would happen to me, and yet here we are. It's easy to think about how much we're missing out on as a result of current events. I don't blame anyone for being sad or upset that they aren't having a normal graduation. So for now, perhaps it's more beneficial to think of graduation as a concept rather than a ceremony. Graduation means that you have finally made it to that light on the other side of the tunnel that everyone's always talking about. The day itself is not how anyone imagined it would be. But we are graduating nevertheless, and there is so much joy in that statement. Let me repeat that. We are graduating. Some may be thinking that it's nothing short of a miracle that they're graduating today. But there are many people who deserve recognition for working so hard to help us through our time here at CLS. First, I want to recognize the parents for their endless support. Thank you for the sacrifices that you have made to ensure that, you, that your child got an education that would form them into young men and women of great character. To the teachers, thank you for being the providers of that education. I admire the determination, understanding, and sense of humor that each and every one of you possess. I would also like to thank the class of 2020 for always having each other's backs and for reminding me that I can be inspired daily by people my own age. Most of all, we have our faith to thank for our success. Even in times of great weakness, God was there to strengthen us. Just as he is here in our greatest times of need, he is also celebrating with us now in our moments of great joy. As salutatorian, it's my job to salute my class, honor all of our achievements, and highlight what makes us special. I'll introduce this by quoting Virgil. If you don't remember who he is, He's the author of that one book we were all supposed to read sophomore year, and some even had the pleasure of reading it a second time, but in a different language. The quote is one that we all know, Fortes Fortuna Yuvat, which translates to, fortune favors the brave, or fortune favors those who dare. So, I want to salute those of you who dared to fall asleep in the front row, who dared to wait until the night before thesis was due to really get things started, and who dared to take AP Physics. I'm just joking, but in all seriousness, I really do salute those of you who dared to take the step to come to CLS, stick with it until the end, and keep your heads up through the hardest of times. The challenges that we had to endure along the way may have driven us crazy and brought us to our wit's end, but doesn't it feel so good to know that you did it? For those of you who may have struggled with mental health at any point in the last few years, and maybe you never thought that you would make it to this day, I want to say on behalf of everyone that we are so incredibly proud of you. For all of us, I hope that we can look back and realize how much we are capable of achieving. For much of my senior year and honestly my whole high school career, I couldn't see a future past my thesis. It was this ever looming presence and I never imagined that I would actually be able to write a 12 page, 12 page research paper. Now that I've gotten it over with, I feel like I can do just about anything. The more we challenge ourselves, the more we learn that we can do. And I think we can all agree that coming to Latin sure did keep its promise to challenge us. Anyways, let's go back to the quote, fortune favors the brave. So, we were all brave. We made the decision to attend CLS. I feel like the fortune that followed that bravery was the fact that all of our paths crossed. Together, we made one awesome senior class. I can say with confidence that I'm proud of what we'll be remembered for. In terms of athletics, many of us will be remembered as captains or teammates that load our teams with confidence and positivity both on and off the field. Some of us were even fortunate enough to be a part of the first ever truly undefeated sports team in coming to Latin history. That's a pretty big deal. 
There were records, both personal and otherwise, that were broken throughout the year. We have a National Merit finalist in our class, as well as some Eagle Scouts. Many of us were brave enough to run for elected positions, join teams or clubs that we had never tried before, and strive for first honors, even if it was for the first time. If Virgil is as wise as everyone says he is, then we must have a lot of fortune coming our way. I mean, the past four or five years have been filled with courageous decisions we probably never thought we would make. Maybe these past years have been practiced for the last quarter of senior year, because, due to the pandemic, we need courage now more than ever to keep our heads up. If we can get past this, imagine how many things we'll be able to overcome in the future. There won't be much that will be able to hold us back. So, I would wish you all the best of luck for next year, but I know that you won't need it. Thank you. For the conferring of our virtual diplomas, I would like to introduce our Dean of Students, Mr. Matt Krebs. Benjamin Connor Bioni. Seth August Bozarth. Lauren Ray Bradhold. Elijah Jacob Fox. Francis Ellen Geiger. Colin Anthony Gerwey. Paige Marie Graff. Grace Elizabeth Harris. Isabella Reese Hemsath. Elise Augusta Hermes. Jude Christopher Huffman. Rylan May Hundemer. Roland Alexander Long. Christopher William Mackey. Ian Michael Minsner. Hope Elaine Nieves. Carter Alexander Nowak. Gabriel Robinson Pertel. Mitchell Walker Smith. Joseph Andrew Sodergren. David Michael Speth. Hannah Rachel Stephan. Eleanor Louise Tarvin. Gabriel Elliot Tepe.
Nikhil William Thimadasha. Russell Raymond Tony. Levi Alexander Weatherford. Ella Marie Weaver. Adam Wolf Weckman. Rowan Keats Weckman. Announcing our subject awards, as well as listing our pontifical servers, will be our Dean of Studies, Ms. Stephanie Tuis. The Theology Award, Francis Ellen Geiger. The English Award, Paige Marie Graff. The Fine Arts Award, Visual, Adam Wolf Weckman. The Fine Arts Award, Musical, Seth August Bozarth. The Latin Award, Roland Alexander Long. The Spanish Award, Isabella Reese Hemseth. The Mathematics Award, Christopher William Mackey. The Oratorical Award, Elijah Jacob Fox. The Science Award, Elise Augusta Hermes. The Social Studies Award, Grace Elizabeth Harris. The Technology Award, Joseph Andrew Sodergren. The Ralph Colatrella Sportsmanship Award, Hannah Rachel Steffen. And David Michael Speth. The Leadership Award, Elise Augusta Hermes. And Christopher William Mackey. The Christian Service Award, Paige Marie Graff. The Faculty Award, the Faculty Award is granted to the senior who most demonstrates our motto of goodness, discipline, and knowledge. Paige Marie Graff. The Most Reverend Roger J. Foyce, Bishop of Covington, is grateful for the pontifical servers for the excellent service during the 2019-20 school year. The senior pontifical servers are Christopher William Mackey, and Gabriel Robinson Pertel. Good evening, Covington Latin School community. As the interim headmaster of Covington Latin School last year, I was fortunate to spend much time with the students of CLS. From the Wednesday masses, Friday assemblies, fine art productions, to ping pong games, I was able to witness what makes CLS so special. Regarding CLS, two words come to mind with aptitude being understood, opinionated and polite. 
The conversations with the CLS students in the class of 2020 were refreshing. They had numerous opinions and shared them with me willingly. From solving local, regional, national, and world problems to debating the benefits of the school lunch program, opinions were in abundance. And it was all done with politeness. The civility and manners of the students were seen in everything and in every discussion. Wherever I would go in the building, I was always met with politeness and a smile. To you graduates, the year 2020 very well could be described as the what if year to the point where there may even be a what if book written about it. And you, the Covington Latin class of 2020, will have a place in that book and the what ifs could be limitless. For what you have missed personally and for what others may have missed or lost, I pray that healing and comfort comes to all. Some would say that we live in a world where everyone is trying to blend in. However, the Covington Latin School class of 2020 will not blend in with any class before it. Your difference will forever stand out. This situation has caused you to form new ideas, to gain new perspectives, and to create new actions, all to positively impact the world. You have your own identity. You will be defined by how you handled all of this, and that is with resiliency, strength, and an everlasting bond with your classmates. There is one constant throughout all of a person's life's experiences, and that is life goes on. I have no doubt that the CLS class of 2020 will go on and do great things. You have a foundation built upon faith, family, and friends. As superintendent of schools, I confirm and commend you on meeting all the high school requirements needed for graduation, and may Christ always be your light as you look to the future. Today we celebrate all of your accomplishments. Congratulations, Covington Latin High School's class of 2020. In the past 17 years, I've spoken and attended 170 graduations and spoken in person to over 15,000 graduates. Actually, I looked forward to those times because it gave me an opportunity to speak directly to the graduating class and to speak to their parents, their families and friends, and thank them for choosing Catholic school education. I had intended to do so this year again, but the coronavirus, COVID-19, has changed many plans for many people. But I'm still happy to be able to speak to you in this way through the technology. Graduation from high school is a significant step in your lives. When I was a young priest, uh, banners were popular. Banners, felt banners were hanging all over schools and churches and auditoriums with little sayings on them. And I remember one that said, today is the first day of the rest of your life. Today is the first day of the rest of your life. If we approach every day like that, I think we would live every day with greater enthusiasm than perhaps sometimes we do. Today is the first day of the rest of your life. We have the rest of our lives, no matter how long or how short that might be, to make a difference in the world. And you graduates, you graduates, having completed your high school education, now move on, move on to whatever it is you're moving on to, whether, whether it's college or whether it's the military service or whether it's seminary or convent. It's the first day of the rest of your life. Whenever there's an ending, there's always a new beginning. That's what commencement means. Commencement ceremony is a graduation. It's, it's a beginning. It's a beginning. And we look forward to what is ahead, to what is yet to be to good days and better days. And so as you move on from your four years of high school, I encourage you to always look forward with, with enthusiasm and with hope and to make use of all that you learned in your four years of high school through Catholic education, to put into practice, to make real all the, the theory that you've learned. 
and to do what is right. That is so important in, in our lives, in this modern day society, to do what is right. And what is right is, is not always what is easy and certainly not always what is popular. But that doesn't matter. What matters is that we do what is right. I'm often reminded of the great statesman and Catholic, Thomas More in the 16th century. Henry VIII wanted everybody in the realm to sign the right of succession and take an oath that they believed in the right of succession. Thomas More, being an upright man, a man of integrity, would not because he could not. He knew it wasn't right. But his friends tried to convince him otherwise, especially the Duke of Norfolk. He said, Thomas, I'm no scholar and I'm no lawyer, but look at everyone else who has signed. These are your friends. If you will not sign because you believe in this, sign for the sake of fellowship. Come along with us for the sake of fellowship. Ah, Thomas More said, for the sake of fellowship. And my dear Norfolk, when you die and you go to heaven for doing your conscience, and I die and go to hell for not doing mine, for not doing what is right, will you come along with me for the sake of fellowship? So remember that as you go through life, at whatever stage of life you are, that what is important is that you do what is right, not what is easy, not what is popular, but what is right. And if you do that, if you do that, you will live a life that is fulfilled, a life that is complete. It doesn't mean that life will always be easy or that things will always go your way, but you will be a person of integrity, a person of integrity. So I congratulate you, I congratulate you on your graduation at this commencement, at this beginning, this new beginning, to look at what lies ahead, to learn from what was before, but to look now at what lies ahead and to always act with integrity, with righteousness, to do what is right. If you live life in that way, trust me, I can tell you this because I'm an old man. I've lived many years. If you live life in that way, you will live a fulfilled life and a happy life. I want to take this opportunity also to say a word of thanks. Thanks to the parents of these graduates, first of all, for the depth of your faith, for having sent your, your son, your daughter to a Catholic school. There are, I've said many, many, many times, there are certainly alternatives to Catholic school education, but there is no substitute. So thank you, parents. I know that many of you have made great sacrifices in this regard. Also want to thank the headmaster, Joseph Gressock, for all that he's done for Covington Latin in this last year. God bless you for your hard work and for taking up the role of headmaster. And my thanks also to to Father Ryan Stinger, the chaplain at Covington Latin, a graduate himself of Covington Latin, who has come back now as the chaplain. And to Father Ryan Mayer, who has served as the pastor administrator of the school, working closely with, with the headmaster and with the school board to provide the best we can for our Covington Latin students. And to all of you students, I ask you, I ask you to always remember what you've learned at Covington Latin, and to put that into practice. God will bless you for it. He truly will bless you for it. To all the faculty, to all the staff, to anyone who has helped in any way, to all our benefactors, thank you. Thank you very, very much. And now let us pray. Lord our God, in your wisdom and love, you surround us with the mysteries of the universe. In times long past, you sent us your prophets to teach your laws and to bear witness to your undying love. You sent us your Son to teach us by word and example that true wisdom comes from you alone. Send your Spirit upon these graduates and fill them with your wisdom and blessings. 
May they use what they have learned for the greater glory of God and for the building up of his kingdom. Bless their parents and all who have brought them to this day. We make our prayer through Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you forever and ever. Amen. And may Almighty God bless you, the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit. By the power invested in me by the Commonwealth of Kentucky, I do by confirm and agree to all of the following graduates having earned diploma recognized by the Commonwealth of Kentucky and being graduates of Covington Latin School. Congratulations. <laughs>
Thank you.